Before we get into this week's tutorial, I actually want to talk very briefly about last week's tutorial. Last week, we talked about macro photography and specifically macro wildlife. And one of the tips I gave early on in the video was the kind of kit that you're going to need to take these photos. And I said you need a camera and a macro lens in order to take those photos. And actually, that might not be completely true. You might not actually need a macro lens to achieve these kinds of photos. And we had a couple of really great comments that pointed that out. And actually, I thought it was worth mentioning in this video because it is a great point. You can use a really long lens to take very, very similar photos of kind of small creatures. I've done that before with a butterfly. I've used a very long lens to achieve a macro kind of effect of taking this photo. But also there are things like tubes which attach to your camera and lens to actually give you that macro effect. And actually that's an incredibly useful way of doing it on a lower budget as well. So it's a really useful thing to know about those. I'll pop some links down in the description so you can go and check those out as well. But that is absolutely worth mentioning. Now, if you are thinking to yourself, yes, but what if I would love a macro lens? What else could I use it for? That is a great question, my friend. Let's talk about it. It's Tutorial Tuesday. <laughs> Welcome back to Tutorial Tuesday, where each week, each and every Tuesday, we bring you a brand new, fresh photography tutorial. And this week, we're talking all about the many possibilities of a macro lens. And this, for me, is actually a big deal. A macro lens is never very far away from my kit bag because I use it for all kinds of different things. The obvious one, of course, macro photography. It's not the only way to achieve that, but it is very convenient. Yes, it makes it pretty easy. And something like the Canon RF 100mm, which we were using last week, does make it very easy with the image stabilization and all that kind of stuff. But what else can you use a lens like that for? Because macro photography is, is kind of niche, right? Like it's a very specific type of photography. Great, don't get me wrong, I love it. But I wanna get some versatility out of my lenses. And using that lens last week really reminded me how much I love a lens like that. Now, there's lots of different focal lengths that you can go for with a macro lens. My favorite tends to be around 100 millimeters. So some will be 105, 110, 90 mil, but around 100 millimeter for me works best. And the reason for that is it's just, it's a focal length that I love using for all kinds of different photography. They're generally reasonably fast lenses as well. So f2.8 is still pretty fast. You can still get a really nice blurred background. And there's a lot that you can do with it. Now it's worth mentioning if you are shooting APS-C or micro four thirds, which is a great way of shooting macro, by the way, that your focal length might differ a little bit, but I'm talking about the effective focal length of around about 100 mil. That sits very comfortably between two great portrait options, 85 mil, and 135 mil. And that really allows you to separate your subject from the background, if that's what you wanna do. Of course, you could stop down and get more of an environmental portrait, but it makes it a fantastic portrait option. And since it's not that dissimilar to something like a 135 or an 85 mil, it shares a lot of the same benefits that you get from lenses like that. So while portraits are an obvious choice and they make a lot of sense, other things like landscape, can be really, really good for this as well. Having a tighter focal length like that really forces you to think about the composition and what is gonna be the subject of the photo. It can be tempting with a wide lens to just sort of take a nice vista and use that as a landscape photo. But when you are talking about a tighter lens like this, it really makes you think about the subject of the photo. Realistically, something's probably not gonna be completely in focus because you are shooting so long. So it does make you think about that subject more, which forces you to think about the composition and just that pure act of thinking about it will generally make for a better photo. That's also true for loads of other types of genres as well. Street photography, I think this works fantastically for that because you can really pinpoint a subject within the photo. But this can work great for product photography, for food photography as well. Product photography in particular, I really like because a longer focal length like this means you can, again, separate subjects from background, but really kind of push in on some of these things. So for example, this photo, it's just of my headphones, but I wanted to kind of frame it up as a bit of a kind of lifestyle-y product photo. This is with the 100 mil, and I actually had to come further back to be able to get the entire headphones in shot, but it really focuses in on that Sony logo, which is great because 
That's kind of what I want to showcase, but you see the entire headphone and with a little bit of lighting, it can look really great. Ultimately, like I said earlier in the video, the main advantage of a lens like this is it is going to really make you think about what is the focal point of the image? Where is the anchor? Where is the point that the viewer's eye is going to rest? And how are you going to compose the image around that? You don't have any choice but to think about it because it's so kind of zoomed, it's so tight. You will have to consider what's gonna be in focus, what's not gonna be in focus, and that ultimately should always result in a better photo. I always feel that the more thought you put in when coming to things like composition, and where is the focal point, all that kind of stuff, the better that end result is going to be. What do you think though? What do you use your macro lenses for other than macro photography, which of course is the obvious one? Do you use it for portrait? I feel like that's a pretty easy one to go to, but landscape, product photography, what else might you use this for? I'd be really interested to hear down in the comments the kind of stuff that you go for with these kinds of lenses. Also, do you have a favorite macro lens? I'd love to hear that as well, of course, you can check out a full list of all the kit used for all these photos in this video and everything down in the description of this video. Don't forget to like and subscribe if you enjoyed the video as well, because of course, there's more content all the way, all the time. I'll be seeing you in the next video, but until then, as always, thanks for watching.